Harnessing the Variational Principle Estimate ground state energy in minutes. Learn how to harness the power of the variational principle to estimate the ground state energy of a harmonic oscillator with an ingenious trial function. Quick, easy, and enlightening. And in such, our problem today is find the best bound on the ground state energy for a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator using the trial function of the form a over x squared plus b squared where a is determined by normalization and b is an adjustable parameter. Again, much like last time, why do we care? Because it provides an upper bound for the ground state energy with a flexible and simple model of how to do so. Again, I'm still curious what limiting factors you might have found in using this, but as also we saw last time how algebraically intensive it was. So don't forget to check out the PDF with uh, the link below. Grab that so you can follow along because I did leave more out of this video simply because we'd already seen it once. If you find value in this content, you can have a direct impact on its success by liking, subscribing, sharing with a friend, or donating through Buy Me A Coffee. No account required. Now, let's get into the fun. Alright, so stop one, as always, we have to normalize the trial function. So inner product test equal one, put that into the integral, noting again that we have constant, 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 bring a squared out front, we got a denominator squared here, but we realize we're an even integrand, so chop that integral in half and double it, alright, fair enough. And in this case, uh, you can use Mathematica, which I would recommend just to speed things up, and a trig sub of x equal b tangent u will do the job for the integral. Evaluating at the boundaries, clearly with the inverse tan and all that stuff, you get a pi from the infinity, and zeros go nicely. So from that, we get a pi over 4b squared, but this 2 that we see here cancels with that 4 and reduces it to a 2. And then, of course, we just get the constant a squared. Shove that over, you get 2b cubed over pi, and then take the square root, and you get the normalization. Cool. Now we can move on to the parameter b and see what we can do with that. But to do that, we need to go ahead and find the expectation values. So let's dive to stop number two. All right. So if we wish to analyze the impact of the parameter b on this setup, Let's go ahead and find the expectation value that we need for the Hamiltonian with the kinetic and potential terms T and V respectively. The again, don't forget the kinetic energy term has the differential operator and taking a derivative of this is gonna be a little cumbersome. So be mindful about all your derivative rules. This negative H bar squared over two M constant, bring it outside. First derivative, we're left with a negative two X over x squared plus b squared all squared, easy enough. Run that derivative again. Uh, you can do a quotient rule or product rule with the chain rule. Doesn't matter how you get there, you just need to get there. Um, and then you see we have some couple common factors. We have a two here and eight is baked in with two so we can factor a two out. We can also factor out a factor of x squared plus b squared. And in doing so, we see that factoring out the two, we're left with the four. Factoring out one factor of x squared plus b squared leaves us with one here, because that was a squared term from the um, quotient rule. And we see that this green term cancels with one of the powers here in the denominator, and this two cancels with that two. So now we're almost done simplifying, but we still have to deal with this fraction. So let's go ahead and simplify this one, multiply the two, and evaluate the integral. Awesome. So. After distributing that negative sign that we had on the original uh, first part from the quotient rule, we saw we had an x cubed there, and um, or a negative x squared, and on the other side we ended up with an 8x squared that reduced to a 4x squared, so that was positive. Then the minus sign, we're left with a 3 total, good to go. The minus sign on the b squared term, good to go. And then because we uh, multiplied the, the denominators together, we ended up back with the fourth power. Not bad. Um, just again, be careful with the algebra. 
check the PDF if you want more detailed work on that. But again, even numerator, even denominator, that tells us that the integrand as a whole is even. So that negative infinity, we can put a two there at the cost of putting a zero there, makes our life easy. And in doing so, uh, we also plug in the constant a squared, which of course was 2b cubed over pi. And then we'll just simplify that down as we run along. We see here that using a partial fraction decomposition on this leads to the partial fractions with one over our parentheses cubed and one over our parentheses to the fourth. Of course, with a factor of uh, four and a factor of three. Again, Mathematica will help you run through that pretty quick that we're not caught up in all the tedious calculations and you can get back to the physics. Now, evaluating the integrals, again, you could use a similar U sub or a trig sub before or use old results. These are in tables, but again, a computer can make that go by real quick. Uh, but nonetheless, we see that this integral leads to a 3 pi over 16b to the fifth. Cool. This integral leads to a 5 pi over 32b to the seventh. But we have a 4b squared out front, so that will cancel with these factors down here. 32 is composed of 8 times 4, so 4 cancels. This b to the 7th will reduce to a b to the 5th, and we're good to go. But in order to add these two fractions, we need to make it a common denominator, so multiply by 2 over 2, and we're good to go. That leads us finally with 9 pi divided, or divided, 9 pi minus 10 pi in the numerator, and of course from there, we're good to go. Again, a lot of cancellations. This b to the third cancels with two of these factors. This four cancels with the factor of four here, pi pi, negative negative, and we result in a h bar squared over four mb squared. So that is our kinetic energy term, and that is pretty simple, all things considered. Let's move on to our potential term now. So, stop three, onto the potential, run the same thing, but here for a harmonic oscillator, we remembered that the uh, potential was of the form one half m omega squared x squared. So, no derivatives there, we just have to be careful on simplifying. We have an a, a, and a one half m omega squared, all constants, bring them out front. Then we see that the x squared from the potential goes in the numerator, and then we have a x squared plus b squared squared in the denominator, even over even, over symmetric bounds, split it in half and double it. That's what we see here. So the one half and the two there cancel, awesome. So we have a zero down here now, just moving forward. And of course, we have once again, a partial fraction decomposition that needs to be had. So doing so, we get a factor of one and a factor of negative b, for our partial fraction decompositions with a linear, uh, a quasi-linear term here and another square term here, and we're good to go. From there, we can evaluate these integrals as such. This one goes to pi over 2b. This one goes to pi over 4b squared. Oh, this is the same one we saw with the uh, normalization. So plug in that result since you already found it. Of course, the b squared out front will reduce these uh, b in the denominator to a 1, which we see here. If we plug in our a squared that we found from normalization, which was 2b cubed over pi, we get a lot more cancellations. So 2 and 4 reduce to a 2. The b cubed here will reduce this b, because remember we took 2 away from this simplification. So that will reduce to a 2, which we see here. Pi and pi cancel. No negative signs to worry about, and we're left with one half m omega squared b squared. That's pretty cool. The x squared gets reduced to a b squared in this case. I was not expecting that, but that's pretty cool to see. So what we have to do now, we have the kinetic and we have the potential. Let's go ahead and combine them to the total Hamiltonian. All right, stop four then. Potential, kinetic, combine them. And again, we're going to use a little bit of hindsight here to split that 4 up that we found into 2 times 2. Because of our next step, taking a derivative, we put it in an algebraically friendly manner for the kinetic term and potential. We're already good to go. So minimize it with the derivative. Find the optimization or critical points. 
Once the derivative is taken, we see that the 2 here will cancel with the 2 from the power rule. That's why we split it up early. And then we get a 1 half and a 2 canceling from the power rule once again. So let's clean it up. Negative h bar squared over 2m. 1 over b cubed. Cool. And m omega squared b. We can deal with that. Of course, we have to set this all equal to 0, so we do so. With this minus sign here, add it to the other side. So you get m omega b is equal to the leftover kinetic term. Then we multiply this b cubed over, hence the b to the fourth there, leaving you with the h bar squared over 2m. Now we can divide by the m omega squared, and as we see, we get b to the fourth uh, with the h bar term times 1 over m omega squared. All that collides to an h bar squared over 2m squared omega squared. Now, let's take a second to note here. We have a b squared term here and a b squared term here, so we don't need to take a fourth root here. We can satisfy our needs for substitution via just a square. So we'll just take a square root of this and a square root of that and simplify it because of the square terms in the Hamiltonian. So what we're left with after taking a square root, this reduces to a second power instead of a fourth. Clearly the square root on this, we have an h bar squared, an m squared, and an omega squared. So they can pop out with a single factor here, here, and here. And all that's left over is a one over root two. Easy enough, we can handle that. So the minimum Hamiltonian then is equal to, well, let's plug the b squared into the kinetic term, the b squared into the potential term, and we see cancellation galore. H bar with one of these factors, M with this M, M with that M, and one factor of omega from the potential with that one, and we get some pretty solid stuff. Simplify that all down to here. Cool, cool. H bar omega, H bar omega, H bar omega, and omega. So cool, we can factor that out. This clearly from the reciprocal came from there since you're dividing by a fraction. Cool. 4 is there, uh, not much more to do with the potential term. We just needed to combine what is root 2 over 4 with uh, 1 over 2 root 2. And that turned out to be 2 root 2 over 4, but we can split the 4 up into 2 times 2 to cancel out the numerators. Thus, we're left with root 2 over 2, h bar omega. But how does this compare to what we actually know from the um, analytic solutions? Well, let's put it in that form. We see that the minimum Hamiltonian was the root 2 over 2 h bar omega. Let's take that down into the uh, forefront, which is just multiplied here. Now we can isolate this 1 half h bar omega, which we saw was the ground state energy. But with an extra factor of root 2, we saw that this is clearly greater than the, bounce, than the ground state energy of the um, analytic solution. So we successfully found the minimum bound on a Hamiltonian using this method. And just for numbers sake, um, the root 2 was, root 2 over 2 was 0 0.707, and the 1 half was 0 0.5, so you're really close, actually. And that was what I thought was really interesting about this problem. We saw how much work it was in the difficulty finding the uh, closed form solutions with the Hermite polynomials and algebraic method. That was a lot of work. This one took just a couple pages, and we got pretty darn close. So imagine how powerful it can be in some of these harmonic oscillators where we have a very odd trial function and we get within 5%. That would be a great starting point for anything with uh, an elaborate experiment. So pretty cool. I'm glad to see we can compare results to old stuff. All right, so in summary, you know, not that bad of a question. A little bit of tricky integration, but nothing that Mathematica can't help you with. Um, that being said, it's great that we get to compare to old results like I'd mentioned previously, because now we get to see just how close this thing can get with this tweaking with the variational parameter. Uh, you know, when I first did this stuff years ago, I was like, why is this, you know, what it is? Okay, let me just get through a test with it. Looking back now, it's actually pretty darn impressive how simple it is and you know we can hear the words read the words from the page or hear it on a youtube video but seeing it come back to life here and it, it being that close just for a ballpark estimate 
That's pretty fascinating to me. Props to the people who came up with this. And uh, of course, again, I have to give a thank you to everyone who supports this channel and this work. It definitely means a lot, and I am greatly, deepful, greatly, uh, greatly, I can't even speak today. I am extremely grateful for your support. Uh, clearly, it's been a long week, so here we are making the most of the least. But that being said, continue being great, and, uh, you know, stay curious, because there's a whole lot more to learn, especially with the way the world's turning right now. AI is helping everyone, so I'm curious to see what kind of educational tools come out. Let me know if you have any you want me to check out and incorporate, because, you know what, I'm in the mood for learning something new. But with that, have a blessed day, and I'll see you next time.